In this video, we'll discuss antiderivatives. An antiderivative is just taking the derivative backwards. The AP standard for this is FUN 6.C, and it says that we can determine antiderivatives of functions and indefinite integrals using knowledge of derivatives. This part about indefinite integrals, we won't actually discuss today. Indefinite integrals are a part of the next unit. So today we'll just find antiderivatives of functions using knowledge about derivatives. Our objective is given a derivative, find the original function. And the way that we'll do this is by working backwards. Let's say if we started off with f of x is equal to 5x plus 3. The derivative of this, f prime of x, would equal 5. Let's pretend that we were given f prime of x is equal to 5 and we wanted to work backwards to find f of x. To do this, we will find the antiderivative of 5. We have to use our knowledge of derivatives to do this. Think, what term of f of x would have given us a derivative of 5? And if f of x had been that number 5 with just a single variable next to it, that variable would have disappeared when we found the derivative. So when we work backwards, we have to multiply that x back into the problem. What about this plus 3? How can we have known that the constant term had to have been a plus 3? Couldn't it have been a plus 5 or a plus 10 or a 0? Where did the constant go? How can we determine what the constant really was? When we take the derivative of a function, that constant goes to 0. It disappears. When we find the antiderivative, we have to put that constant back in. For f of x equal to 5x plus 3, the derivative was 5. That constant, 3, disappeared when we found the derivative. If we're given f prime of x and want to find f of x, then what do we do about that unknown constant is we add c. The general solution contains a term of plus c, which is a placeholder for the unknown constant. Let's look at a few quick examples of adding the c. Let's say that we're given f prime of x is equal to 2. We want to find f of x. We know that this 2 is going to be a part of our answer. The only way to end up with a constant when you take a derivative is if you had an x multiplied with that constant for f of x. Now that we've found the antiderivative of 2, we can add a term c to complete our answer. That value of c is the placeholder for the unknown constant. What if we're given f prime of x is equal to 1 over x? We need to think which function's derivative gives us a rational function. And the answer is the natural log of x. If we take the derivative of the natural log of x, it would give us 1 over x. We need to be careful though. Inside of f prime of x, that x in the denominator could be negative. Inside of our natural log, that x is not allowed to be negative. You cannot take the natural log of a negative number. So to account for this, we need to put an absolute value around the x inside the natural log. Now that we've found the antiderivative of the 1 over x term, we can add a plus c at the end. Be mindful of putting those absolute value bars around the x inside the natural log. This might seem like an arbitrary step, but failing to do this is significantly wrong. Let's look at one more quick example. f prime of x is equal to cosine of x. Which function gives us a derivative of cosine of x? The answer to that is sine of x. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So the antiderivative of cosine of x is sine of x. Now that we've found the antiderivative of the cosine of x term, we can add a plus c at the end to finish our answer. Every time, every time you find the antiderivative, you must put the plus c at the end. If you don't, then your answer is wrong. When we first learned how to find the derivative of functions, we learned about the power rule. Now that we're doing antiderivatives, we can use the reverse of the power rule. This is called the power rule for antiderivatives. If f prime of x is equal to x raised to the nth power, where n is some constant, and n is not equal to negative 1, then f of x is equal to 1 over n plus 1 times x raised to n plus 1 plus c. Whatever your original exponent was, n, you have to add 1 to it to find the antiderivative. And then at the same time, multiply by that reciprocal. In the next video, we'll look at a few examples of how to use the power rule for antiderivatives.